this book then, uh, 50 for Your Future, Lessons from Down the Road, is a book that I hope, and I say this humbly, will help you find a way into being more of your authentic self. And I believe that, you know, you might as well just be who you are because everybody else is taken anyway. Uh, but the challenge is that so many of us have a very difficult time trying to find the way into being our authentic selves. I believe that each of us is challenged to live a life where we are constantly seeking the truth and speaking the truth and standing on the truth. If you haven't figured that out yet, then you wouldn't know what the meaning of life is all about. It's all about trying to seek the truth and then speak the truth, share what it is you know, and then stand on that truth. Now, I recognize that I don't have a monopoly on the truth. I'm humble enough to understand that, that there is the truth and there is the way to the truth. But I believe that on our journey to the truths that we find in our lives, um, whenever, wherever, however, and from whomever, I am fortunate to get some good advice. I believe that it is my duty to share that with those who I come in contact with. And so this book really is a, is, is a collection of some of the best advice that I've received, some lessons I've learned the hard way um, but there are lessons that I hope each of us can take um, humbly uh, to, to live lives that are much more authentic. Uh, we live in Los Angeles, and it's, it's awfully difficult, let's be honest, sometimes to know the difference between what's real and what's fake, between what's real and, and what's phony. I, we, 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 this is Hollywood, and so we have seen over the last 20 years the, 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 the advent and the onslaught of so-called so -called reality television. It is my belief that the reason why reality television has just jumped off the chain and everybody now has a reality TV show is because in an interesting and perhaps counterintuitive way, what the American people are craving in a world where everything is fake and phony is authenticity. We are craving what is authentic. And I have found that when people discover something that is real, when they discover something that is authentic, when they discover something that has meaning and purpose and value, they gravitate to it because that is the abnormal these days. It's abnormal to find uh, people and, and ideas that are born of authenticity. And so when people see that, they sort of gravitate to it. In this town, it's often, uh, awfully difficult at times to know what's real, what's fake, what's phony, and what's real. And so it's about trying to live lives of, of authenticity. I believe then that in the time that we live now, people are craving the truth. They're craving authenticity. And so this book is offered, again, with humility, as a way to help you live a more authentic life. The book is ultimately then a book about, how might I put this? It's a book that will help you figure out who you really are. And the older I get, the more I, the more I, I learn on a daily basis that that, again, is what life is all about. Ultimately, trying to figure out who we really are. At the end of the day, who are you really? And for some of us, it takes a lifetime to, to actually figure that out. One of the lessons in the book uh, is about finding a mission statement for your life. I can't begin to tell you, I'm not going to ask for a show of hands, but I see folk all the time who, how can I put this kindly, folk who are uh, chronologically gifted. Y'all got that right. <laughs> chronologically gifted, and yet they have not figured out what the mission statement is for their life. I talked to an audience of a couple thousand young people a couple nights ago on this tour in Ohio, and I could see the eyes of these young folk light up when I asked them to marinate on that question, just that simple question. What is the mission statement for your life? I believe that each of us gets a chance, if we accept it, to write our own eulogies. I hope that you'll live a long time, and God knows I want to live a long time. I've got a lot more work that I want to do. But I believe that I have the opportunity and you have the opportunity to write our own eulogy. If you know how you want to be remembered, if you know the life that you want to live, if you know the legacy that you want to leave, why can't you decide that this is the eulogy that I want given about me? And then you just go out and you live that life. You decide the kind of morals and the values and the ethics that you want to uh, live your life around. You decide what the immutable principles are that you want to live your life around, and you just go live that life. 